in progress. I promise I'm not a robot. And thank you for the guy in the back. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, you know what? Yes. <laughs> Hold on. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So um, I'm, I'm going to remove your spotlight there. Ah, good idea. Get yourself down in here. Uh, gallery. Okay, so usually um, Bruce does this, but do you want to take the host and then you can um, make it? Sure, I can do that. So we uh, can... Where is the view? Uh, speaker, how do I get hosting? Do I probably have to go to the participants thing here. Participants, there we go. Yeah. And you click on more and then... Yeah, exactly. I'm just trying to get there. Um, well, let reclaim host. There we go. So I'm now the host, and then uh, we are in gallery view at the moment, which is what we want. And I think we're good. Is that all I need to do now, I think? Just gallery view? I or do I want to do gallery on so. top? Do we want uh, standard? I don't see gallery view top? at all. There. I just see is us. That better? There we go. Now that should be better. That's it. You did it. Yay. <laughs> you I suddenly got realized it. what I had to do. All right, good. Well done. Well done. Um, movie. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a big movie came out, and I guess Bruce is seeing it today, and Andy saw it yesterday. But Andy uh, didn't didn't make it. Oh, there he is. There he is. Andy didn't make it here today. Let's move him over. Why is this? I just oh. promoted him to panelist, too. Oh, you did it. Okay, that's why he was showing up. I just did, okay. but I thought you had. I thought you had tried to do it once, and then I also did it after that. So I was trying to, but the normal buttons were gone. It just had a hmm. chat button. Ah, because it. I'm that's host. Weird. I didn't. I didn't say co-host. I couldn't do it. So that's you know what? I should probably. Uh, I should probably give you back co-host here. <laughs> um, Boy, we should so start these like like five minutes early, just so we we have our ducks well, in a row. Normally, Bruce does all these starts. things. Like these things make sense to me, but I just I wouldn't yeah. think bang 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 is what we need to do. Um, there. Can someone open the camera? Uh, yeah. Um, open the camera. Yeah, I'm working on it here. More change rule allowed to uh, put on hold. Change. Well, there's no option to do that. Why isn't um, he? Sorry, everybody. <laughs> make co-host there. I'll make you a co-host. We're all going to be co-hosts now. I can't make anybody there we anything go. anymore. Now we got camera going. Okay. I brought him in as a panelist, and then I didn't realize I also all, had to also promote him to being a co-host for him to use the camera. All right. Well, there, there we are. We're all here. I do lots of Zoom just... meetings, but not that many <laughs> webinars. So there you go. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my gosh. And yet we got one like on this whole thing. So we must be doing something <laughs> right. <It's> Bruce, somebody <laughs> likes the Pratt Falls. Yay. <laughs> you guys are better right. than Three Stooges. I love it. All right, we, we will move along quickly here since we, gosh, have spent four minutes just getting ready to really? oh, for this. Sad. Yes, but uh, did you enjoy the movie, Andy? I need to find that out before we uh, go further. I did very much so. What did you, mm -hmm. you, you, you've, you've seen it, haven't you? Yeah, I saw it last night. Mm -hmm. You enjoy it? I, I I stayed awake for the entire movie. So, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure that's a ringing in toss, <laughs> but, but um, <laughs> I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Probably more than the first one, if truth be told. Hmm. Yeah, um, I, I, uh, yeah, I'd be with you. I'm, I'm probably going to wait till it comes out on some kind of streaming service or video. Oh, no, Bruce is going tonight, isn't he? Bruce's birthday today, isn't it? Is it really? Ah, I didn't yeah. realize. Yeah, I think so. 
Fair enough. Happy birthday, Bruce. Um, I enjoyed the movie. That's what I'll say. And that's it. I can't. I can't say anything else. It just came out. You can't talk about no, it. No, no, can't no. We can't. No, no. Say we can't anything at all about what happened in it. So no, no, uh, we'll move on. Think. There are planes no, and think. explosion and Tom Cruise. There's planes and air fights and conflict between some of the characters and interpersonal uh, stuff. You gotta have. Then it ends. Have, you yeah. gotta have conflict, and then everybody. Yeah, all they all live happily ever after, except the people who don't. And there's a mission. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> There you go. And that tick, might tick, be giving tick. away too much. I might have given away too much on that one. No, no, it's, uh, good. That's, a, that's a given. There's there's something to do. They need to do there's something. There's a mission. All right. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in Clarion Live land. This is the Clarion Live weekly webinar. See it, learn it, share it. This is webinar number 662. Today is May 27, 2022. And since date. we're getting close, John, I just want to make a point here. 666, I don't care what day that is. I've, I've got to do that one. So. You're, doing, you're going to do 666? Well, yeah, that's yeah. four away. That's, that's a month away. away. Yeah, so it's going to be like sometime in June we're going to do it. End of June. It might still be the Maybe. thing we're doing might today. Be beginning of July. There's a possibility. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 24th yeah. of June. One, two, three, 24th of June. Oh, yeah. no. No, no, yeah. no. It's, yeah, yeah, 24th yeah. of June. Yeah. John, you, you're going to yeah. hate me. You put me down for the tenth, but I'm only on half day because I've got tickets to go and see the premiere of uh, Jurassic World. <laughs> and Wendy will kill me if I don't go to that. <laughs> Jurassic World. So I do need to do something different. Uh, I've got stuff to present. I can make sure I've got stuff to present, but I can't do the tenth. <laughs> Wendy will literally kill me. All right, uh, I'm going to make one comment about Jurassic World, and we'll move forward. And that is that. This whole thing of, <clears throat> excuse me, this whole thing of holding up your hand in front of a, of a raptor guy, right, right, in front of a dinosaur and having the dinosaur just chill out or whatever. That's got to stop. Just eat your that's got to stop. <laughs> just eat your, oh, I look, know, I mean, morsel, try that with power. any other kind of uh, animal. It just, it doesn't work, except with a dog. I mean, those dinosaurs are not domesticated. That's all I want to say about that. That's just got to stop. But, you know, he's and got yet, okay. powers. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll chat on Monday about a different date. So we will put it's something in the, in the It's in the trailer. We'll All right, we'll preview, get you on that one. We'll preview uh, version six. Good enough. All right, we're on, uh, we're on Skype. We are live streaming on YouTube. We have five likes now with six, uh, five viewers. Oh, five and five. Very doing pretty good. Nice. We had six viewers, one left. They were just like... Are you going to talk about movies? I'm not going to stick around. All right, we have hosts for today's webinar. Uh, I'm here. John is here. Yay. Bruce is not here. Andy Wilton is here for a bit. And Mike Hansen is here. Goodness, where's your guy? Did you hear him? Where's my guy? There he, there he is. There he is. All right. <laughs> All right. That uh, we have rules, blah, 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 blah. Down to the bottom, do not live stream movies from the theater. Uh, I yeah, found out I, that's an actual rule. So I'm curious <laughs> as to as to whether like a, they've got like special technology to catch it, or whether like if somebody stands up there every once in a while and looks to see if somebody's got a cell camera going on. Or I, I, I would think they'd want to be trying to crack down on that as much as possible, but I don't know how you could. I've heard of them having like you know cameras at the screen facing the audience, and then you mm -hmm. can see when someone's got their camera on, right? Because I guess that's true. Infrared yeah. or what have you. But that's that's got to only be for like big theaters or something. No, no theater where I live is going to do that. So. Mm. But don't do it. Look, it's a rule. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah. Don't so do people it. People aren't going to do it anyway because it's a rule, right? No, no, no. Right. Mm. Before, the, before the webinar started, Bruce was streaming and we were watching uh, the movie a little bit. But then, you know, I think he got caught. Anyway, feature we have feature presentation today. Mike Hansen and myself will be doing tabs too. So we'll be programming as a spectator sport. So that's what we're doing. Next week, Keith Casey with NGROC will be here. And I encourage you to be here next week uh, because NGROC is very cool. And you may find that it, you, you want to use it for something. You yeah. know? And it's it's a whole new person coming in to present from yes, a whole different right. company that has nothing to do with Clarion. And yet we can all use it in our Clarion programs. So pass the yeah, word around. Um, yeah. See you next week. We have CIDC 2020 in Africa coming in 2022. I've started working on the intros, the graphic, even though we don't have the presentations nailed down yet, I've started working on 
the graphics for, you know, what's the music going to be and what's it going to, you know, what are the subtitles? What, what are the titles going to be? All that stuff. I started gathering those things together and working through the production side. So wow. that's where I am right now. You're a planner, John. Good job. I've been updating the training because, of course, for all the ones who've already signed up, they've already had the training and they can still download and watch it. So I've been working on the uh, what's going to be the new content. And I think it's going to work. I'll chat about it to, to you guys uh, offline. But, yeah, I think it works. Still keeps in track uh, with what we're doing, but takes it forward for the future as well. Well, we've got uh, June, July, August, September. So four. Easy, easy. <laughs> easy. I don't know. Be here before you know it. So that's why I'm getting started. I'm, I have all the gear all set up on a table, and now I just got to start putting all the everything together so it's it's easy to produce. That's the prep part. It takes a while. But that's happening. So um, I imagine Bruce will get some kind of a, an email sent out soon i'll talk to him monday and encourage oh maybe yeah monday i encourage him to um get that out because we need to find out of all the people who signed up who's coming and who's not to see if there's extra slots open or not it's like a good crowd too okay uh announcements we have uh noyantis user group meeting and that happened and andy was there right well uh, what we did he did uh um, did what do we do? What do we do? And chill cut. We no, not that's not chill cut. It was all of it. We spoke about the upcoming version six uh, and major changes to how you compile the chill cut library in. Uh, so if you do compile compile a chill cut library in, it with it growing all the time and new and there's quite a lot of data definitions in there. And we're getting scenarios now with customers where it can just give you the uh, too many, I forget what it is, not enough, pro, not enough memory to process your command or too many, whatever, but it can it can cause Clarion to max out, if you will, from a compile point of view. Uh, so now that's no longer the issue. You can control and there's further changes. Finished about four minutes before this webinar, <laughs> yeah. um, which we took on board some changes from, uh, from Monday. Uh, so there was that. Uh, so that, that's a biggie, to be fair. We had a quick look at report control and the data binding. Um, and we chatted about a couple of things which can go into version six from report control. Uh, there was a major talk about sending emails, uh, which seems to be the theme just of late, um, definitely this week and last week. So just sending emails in general. Obviously, Gmail and their up, upcoming changes. Um, Office 365 coming up before you know it as well. Their changes, just sending emails in, in in general and options you've got, and we'll leave it at that. That was a major chat. Uh, uh, but a blatant plug while we're there is our new hosting plans, web hosting from Niantis. Check it out. <laughs> um, there was that, and then there was a question regarding uh, docking paints, and it was just a setting uh, to do with MDI windows. And that was it. All right, um, which led us to the open webinar where we continued talking about email. And, email uh, for half the webinar. <laughs> yes. I know. For those not aware, if your program sends email and you're using SMTP and you're going through Gmail, they're shutting down the unsecured uh, logins for yeah. SMTP. Uh, and we came across like uh, three different solutions, I guess, of what you can do. One of them is settings your customer has to do. One of them, you have to make changes to the service that you're using. You might not use Gmail anymore. You might use something like Postmark or uh, SendGrid. Is that what it is? Well, and and uh, Amazon's got their, uh, their, their simple grid, yeah. mail stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's, there's all sorts of mail gun. Yeah. There's all sorts of different ones. And, uh, or you might use, um, and he's been working on a way to, to log in with uh, OAuth and such. So there, that's all discussed in the open webinar. So uh, if you're in that position, or if you didn't realize that Gmail was shutting down, they are doing that in uh, about three days, I right. believe, on the 30th, I think, is what I heard. And actually, they've already shut off where you where you cannot log in unsecurely anymore. At least you can't turn that switch on anymore. And that was the big discussion on Wednesday. More or less. Then there was yeah. More or less, yeah. I, I, don't, I guess there were some other things, but... Um, I don't there was know. a question about really? signing into Google. Um, I mean, it might be OneDrive. Oh no, 
or Google Drive, one of the, I think it's Google Drive. Yeah, Google Drive. Uh, signing in using Chrome Explorer, and you can't do it through Chrome Explorer because, and Bruce explained why, Google forced you for it to be an external browser. And when he explains it, because you can trap keystrokes and inter, inter, uh, you know, intercept the, what they're typing, then it kind of does defeat the object of having secure OAuth too. So it does make sense for it to be external. Uh, but there was a quick chat about that as well. That was really the bulk of it though. All right. Uh, then there was a NetTalk user group meeting. Bruce is not here to talk about that. So um, that was look it up on YouTube. <laughs> There's things on YouTube. I've been I've been putting the questions into the chat on um, on the YouTube stream. So if you want to see what the questions were, you can kind of zoom to the end because they're real time chats. They they just go in about when the the questions were asked. But if you want to see what all the questions were, you can go to the end and then Bruce posts up notes every once in a while. I don't know. I don't know that he did it yesterday though. The notes right, on then, the Monday and Wednesday. I always put the notes at the bottom. Cool. And that's really cool. All right. Uh, another thing that happened on the uh, YouTube stream is I didn't realize it, but we did not have closed. I did not have closed captioning turned on. For some reason, some recordings would have closed captioning. Some wouldn't. We have um, our friends down in South America appreciate the closed captions. So I went ahead and I made sure that all of the webinars now have closed captioning. So you can uh, turn that on if you want to read what we said. Um, all webinars now have closed captioning. Oh, cool. So there you go. I think you can turn it on right now if you're watching it. It's um. But why would you? <laughs> why, why would you do that? I don't know. Anyway, um, next week again, Keith Casey uh, with NGROC will be with us. I encourage you to see that. And I might um. I don't know. We'll see how that goes, and then I can show how I implemented it maybe the next week or the week after, just as a follow-up. We'll see how our schedule goes for the rest of the month. And that brings us to the feature presentation. Mike, we made it. Howdy, howdy. And we're, we're kind of on schedule, so there you go. It's not astonishing. Well, it's because we didn't have Bruce blathering on like he always does. That's the thing. <laughs> Bruce, just chatter, chatter, chatter. <laughs> Uh, lovely. Okay, let me uh, share my screen here. We want this handy, we want that handy, and we want to go share screen. Uh, and yes, I want to do that, and I want to do that, and then drag this out of the way so I can actually see what I'm doing. All right, this is a continuation. This is, in reality, is actually part four but in a sense, it's part two of subsection two. <laughs> Whatever. Uh -huh. We're talking about uh, MDI uh, tabs. Uh, as you all know, or most of you know, Clarion added this ability to have MDI tabs, you just turn it on in a global setting, and it automatically just says, hey, all your threads are going to be represented as individual tabs on your frames uh, toolbar area or down at the bottom somewhere. Uh, and we decided that uh, although that's kind of a cool feature, it doesn't work nearly as well as we'd like. It's, it's a little quirky and it's a black box. We have no control what's going on. So we thought, wouldn't it be nice if that feature actually did, did what it was supposed to do uh, and was flexible enough to let us play with it and, uh, and, and let us do all sorts of other things with it, like if we're using Noyantis docking panes and we've got you know three threads running with, within one window, we wanna make sure the one thread is updating this thing. What if we have a, a processing thread that we don't wanna have represented as a tab at all? What if we have, uh, we don't want what's showing up in the caption to be the actual thing that's showing up in the tab? Lots and lots of things like that. So to do that, uh, we started working last week to reproduce that functionality using our own code. We're rolling our own, so to speak. Uh, and to do that, uh, we've got this lovely mind map that tells us everything we need to do. And of course, the basis of anything is the logic that that underpins everything and we had created some classes. Uh, we eventually will get to creating templates. We're not there yet. Uh, last week, we created some uh, some internal management stuff in terms of some uh, some non-threaded queue and, uh, and a critical section object to manage that access to the non-threaded queue. 
Uh, we had a threaded class and object so that it can automatically create entries in this non-thread queue as threads come into existence and out of existence. Uh, we also created uh, a good portion of the base window class, which is going to be something that's instantiated on uh, pretty much every window likely is what we're going to end up doing with templates eventually. Uh, but uh, initially, we'll just start by doing it by hand in a few spots. And this base window class is something where when you inherit it, you are able to reach into the internals of this thing to, to get access to, uh, to the various queues and such that need to do the, the updating of uh, the state of things. Uh, and I should just, I was going to mention uh, this queue that's inside of this thing. Um, it is fully and completely encapsulated within the class module. You have no access to it externally, even if you derive the class. And if it looks like at some point that we need to be able to do that, so that a derived method, our drive class uh, could actually uh, reach in and touch that particular queue itself. Uh, there are some things we could do to expose that thing, uh, but uh, for the moment anyway, we're just going to leave it hidden and safe. Uh, the less the outside world knows about how this thing works, the better, because it means, of course, that we could change the way it works at any point if we feel like it without worrying about breaking somebody's code. So we'll try and do as much as possible with things like getters and setters and such things, and then we'll worry about managing all of the crazy machinations inside. Now, what we want to do now is, as I mentioned, we have this, uh, we have this, this basic class structure, we have this window class, uh, we really haven't touched upon the frame class at all. And then what I'd like to try and achieve today, if I could, is I'd like to actually start trying to implement this window class and create a frame class so that we can actually have the tabs on our frame and have them created uh, at runtime. Uh, we'll see how far we get along with it. Um, there's a good chance, there's lots of little pieces we're gonna have to work on, uh, but uh, we may get uh, to a point where we've got a working example today, or we may get most of the way and then finish it in a future webinar. We'll see how we go. Uh, and with that, uh, let us jump over to our sample application. Well, this is the Mike, uh, the regular. Mike, you yeah. got it, John. You got to top gun this thing, man. You got to see this. This is the mission. We got this much time to do it, and then you got just do it. Even yeah, I've never just seen top gun. Okay, so our mission. <laughs> if you choose to accept it. Oh wait, hold our on. Mission. Wait, that's the wrong Tom Cruise movie. Oh, this is so, this is... <laughs> I can now, play the music wait, in the background second. if you. Yeah, if that'll but, get but, you. But but, but uh, hold on. Yeah. Tom Cruise does the Mission Impossible thing, but they also do the mission in Top Gun. Well, I guess they're all missions. Yeah. They? We you have a mission, today. mission. Our mission yes. is to achieve this. We've got until two o'clock, which is yep. well, two o'clock my time, which is approximately an hour and thirty-eight minutes uh, yep. to try and achieve this particular functionality. And our mission, if we can achieve it, is to actually have a, a set of tabs appearing on our frame in the toolbar. And, and automatically created uh, and destroyed as the th threads come into and out of existence. It's a bit of a stretch, but we might we might just achieve that. But at the very least, we should get some of it kind of sort of working. We might have a few bugs and, and nigglets to, to deal with. So uh, here we have our lovely application. And just for fun here, let's just run this thing just to make sure that it still does compile. I'm pretty sure we had it compiled last time. There we go. And, uh, and you'll see that the, uh, uh, the tabs here, this is the regular MDI tabs uh, that are done. And we're going to leave those in place because eventually we want to start seeing how ours compared to the regular ones. But you'll notice issues uh, like, for example, if we go help, well, we don't get to see the about window, but let's just restart the program because I want you to notice that even the about window opening up causes a tab to appear. And strangely enough, it's got, I guess, the icon from this thing. Uh, yeah, it must yeah. be the icon for this window. It's got no um, caption, so there's no text next to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. There's the no text to image, it, but, there, yeah. but the icon is there. And that's something I hadn't even considered, is the, the fact that, that we might want to put the, the tabs work and we want to add this to the frame. So what we're going to do is we want to start with the idea of a, uh, a place to put our tabs here. So let's just start by taking our toolbar and let's make it a little bit bigger. And then on this thing, we're going to go to the toolbox and we want a sheet. And let's just stick it right there. And it's already got a tab on it and I don't want it to be that big. Let's just make it a little smaller here. 
And what I really want to do is I want to go back to properties. I want to make sure that this thing takes up the full width. So we're going to go, where's our sheet? Our sheet is currently selected and we want the width to be full. And da, 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 come on, full. And our height, that's probably higher than it needs to be. So let's just kind of ease it down. I think usually around 15 or 14 is what I like for tabs. And there's that. Uh, and then additionally, there's another option. I'm trying to remember what it's called because I don't actually need to see the sheet itself. I just want the tabs. Uh, so we're going to look for, where is it? Da, 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 da. I don't think the property's there. there. Yeah, it's, it's prop no sheet. You have to set it oh, in hand code. Oh, yeah, you're probably right. I probably do. Okay, so let us then um, come along. Oh, that was one other thing I also wanted to do. You guys go to properties. And oh, I no, no, no sheets is for sheets. Yeah, that's for tab. Okay. Yeah, no, it is, um, it is yeah, no sheet. It's no sheet. Yeah. It's no sheet. Um, okay, so I would like to start just by taking this tab off. I'm hoping it lets us have a blank sheet. Um, so we're going to say, and let's change the name of this thing. The, the uh, Let's call it MDI sheet, a tab sheet. MDI tabs sheet. Um, and it let us do that, lovely. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, jump to the uh, open. Here's opening the app frame, and we're going to say, um, we're going to say MDI tabs frame dot init. There. I want to do some initialization of this thing. Uh, so when you're coding stuff, there's always a different approach you can take. Sometimes it's great to say, okay, I know there's going to be some stuff in the underbelly this stuff is fixed, it's got to be there. Uh, and, and so you tend to do bottom up development, you say, okay, let's build all the stuff. And then let's sort of jump up on top and start, you know, trying to implement that and then realize, oh, wait, I missed some stuff. And you go back and you touch the bottom every once in a while. But you tend to get sort of a fairly useful functional thing in the bottom before you even start thinking about the top. That's the approach we took. Another approach you can take is to say, you know what, I, I'm just going to start trying to, to just rough in the stuff in my application in the UI and then start building the pieces underneath as I need them. Because uh, you will occasionally find that there are pieces uh, that you were sure you were going to have to add at the bottom sense. Uh, but for whatever reason, it turns out that you were absolutely wrong, that really you could achieve that thing without that bottom level feature. But you spent all that time coding and you're like, oh, God, I wasted a bunch of time. So I tried to create just the bare bones stuff that I needed that I was quite certain would have to be there. But I didn't try and add all the possible functionality there because I, I like kind of doing both sides. I like saying, let's start in the bottom, build a really basic foundation just so we have an idea as to what sort of things we're going to be talking to. Then let's jump up to the top level and try and start implementing it. And then we'll meet somewhere in the middle. So this is what we're currently doing is, is I know I'm going to have an MDI uh, tabs frame uh, and I want to initialize it. In fact, maybe we say init window. Well, it's only going to be in one init right after the window opens. We're just going to assume that that has to be the way it happens. So given we've got that, we're now going to just rough this in here. And eventually I'm going to have most of this functionality in here. Uh, what I want what I want here is I want it to just instantiate only the um, uh, an actual object from the base class and to do as little stuff here as possible. I just want to do you know a little bit of initialization of here's how the object should work. Here's what you're going to be dealing with. Um, but uh, I will sort of go back and forth between saying, okay, let's code some of this as the class at this level. And then when I realize, hold on, the class here can't access the stuff it needs down there, then I'll start moving methods down into, into the base class. Or, well, you know what? I think we're going to have to do this so soon. Maybe we should just do uh, the, the first little instantiation thing here. So what are we calling our uh, class here? Ultimate MDI tabs frame. So we're going to be instantiating that thing. So this is going to be here. So this is going to be an instance of that. And, uh, and I think we will need an init method because we need some place to put the code that the init is going to be doing. Uh, so this is going to be deriving it. So we're going to say this is a class. We're not going to say comma type here because this is the actual instance of our class within our frame. Uh, and end. 
So let's start with that. Uh, so we can come down here and then we're gonna add this to local procedures. And what do we want it to do? Well, one of the things we've got to do is we've got to say self.sheet equals, uh, should we say sheet fec? I like using fec on there just to make it obvious as to what it is. Sheet fec equals um, MDI tabs sheet there. And then let's see if uh, if that's enough for the moment. And then we're going to say parent.init. So we're going to have two init methods. Uh, the one is is uh, is here, and then it's going to also have a parent one that can do more. Uh, and perhaps we'll end up changing it eventually to say parent.init. Maybe that's a good idea. Let's just go MDI tab sheet. There, better. And then now we can come back to here. And we're going to say MDI tabs frame uh, .net procedure signed uh, frame. Oh, sorry, sheet fec. Let's start with self. There, self sheet fec equals MDI tab sheet equals sheet fec. Good, lovely. Uh, so that at the very least that needs to happen. And because we've got that, it means we need this to be part of our class. So let's go back into our class. Let's just move this over so it's lined up a little nicer. And that doesn't need to be here anymore, nor does this or this. Okay, so here we have this and we're gonna say um, da, 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 this whole thing there. So now we've got that piece. Problem is it doesn't really do anything yet, but that's probably fine. So we now have our sheet. And what do we wanna do? Well, let's just, first of all, make sure that it actually runs. Uh, so we'll go, oh, hold on, not quite. I just remember there is something we do need to do. We were talking about this earlier. We're gonna say self.sheet fec prop no sheet equals true. There we go. Mike, I have a, a correction here. Yeah. You, you can do that in the properties, by the way. Okay. But you? yeah, you can. Um, but I want to make sure it happens anyway. I think you want to make sure it happens. And are we going to end up creating the tabs ourselves anyway? We're going to we create gonna the them? tabs, but I want to create the, um, the what's it called? The uh, uh, sheet is going to be a control template. So you're going to be populating okay. the sheet and there's a chance that we may have to populate a tab as well. So we may have to, uh, just because when you, uh, when you populate a template, I ran into my locator tabs and we'll confirm that later when we get to the template phase. Uh, with locator tabs, you had to populate the tabs. And then I think I ended up either using the first tab that was created uh, or I deleted it immediately and then created them in the fly as I needed them. Can't remember which I did, but there were some quirks with the way that, uh, that uh, tabs uh, and sheets get populated as control templates. So we will cross that hurdle eventually when we get to template creation. Uh, but for the moment, we All don't right. have to pay attention to that. So let's go ahead into window and see if we can just set that. So you say there's a no sheet. You can, yeah, sheet. click on the tab. We got to click on the on yeah. the tab part. Where okay, is it? I can do it this way. Sheet, where's my sheet? Where's sheet. the sheet? There's the sheet. Uh, okay, all the way to the, the bottom. It's difficult without a tab there, so. It is. Okay. All the way to the bottom, there's options. Wait a minute. Options, here we go. Oh, on mine. Oh, there it is. Yours are in the middle. Mine's at the bottom. System maximize. Oh, hold on. Wait, it's in the wrong. That's not right. You're, are you sure you're on? Yeah. I don't right think place. you're. The uh... problem is, okay, here's what we're going to do. Uh, yeah, we, you're not really. Whenever I start seeing this, it means Clarion's about to crash. Oh, that's an old bug, isn't it? Well, you start diddling with the window too much and it wants to do things. Okay, window. What I've noticed is if you choose a, uh, you should be able to choose any control from this drop list. And if you see the stuff for it, great. But if it's still stuck on some other control, especially the window structure, yeah, the window, then you know yep. it's about to go south. 
Okay, yeah. now down here at the bottom, we have there they are, a see. sheet. Right, yeah. I was thinking yeah. it was here somewhere. I just yeah. I don't spend yeah. a lot of time diddling with Windows. I'm, so much of my my time is spent coding. Uh, that uh, And I try to avoid the ID as much as possible. So a lot of times I just go into the window source and edit it there. It's a little easier. Uh, now, do we need anything else? Wizard, no. Immediate, no. no. Don't need any of that stuff. So we are now going to try and compile this thing and see what happens. It's not, of course it's not there. I knew that. Uh, so we're going to say sheet. Effect signed, and it doesn't need to be private or anything else like that. Um, well, maybe it should protect it. Uh, we'll still be able to access it in the class, but I don't want somebody outside of the class going, "Oh, MBI tabs frame dot sheet fact equals something else." Kaboom! Uh, so, we'll, if somebody's actually deriving the, the class uh, up in the frame. Uh, then go ahead, you can touch the sheet fact because I'm assuming that you're smart enough to do what you're doing, but I don't want someone else just accidentally touching my stuff when it's not supposed to be time to touch my stuff. So that's just probably going to compile now. And there is our sheet here, which we can't see. Now, the next thing we want to do is, um, what is the first... Um, tab button I wonder here let's just go in and take a look at that what is this one called actions, actions. browse customers okay so let's make browse customers work first here so browse customers here we go now in this guy we are going to add a an instance of the window class so we're going to say mdi tabs window um, ultimate there, and we're gonna let's drive it because there's a darn good chance we're gonna have to do something with it here. And uh, let's have an init method, much like we did in the other case. Now this is now the windows come into um, into creation. And if we think about it, we've already got a class inside, and let's just review that really quick. We already have a class inside uh, called a, uh, a sync class, which is our synchronization object. You'll notice that it does not have the thread attribute. So this is our singleton. This is the one instance, and, and this thing is responsible for dealing with everything uh, as far as the internal uh, data that it's managing. But here's our thread instance. Again, we don't have a comma type but we do have comma thread, which means thread instance is actually an object instance that comes into existence with every single thread that's created. And every time a thread finishes and goes away, this object goes away. So it gives us a good opportunity to do a construct and a destruct that happens every single thread. And if we take a look at the uh, methods for that thing, oh, here we go. So here's our thread instance. And we say, if it's thread one, we don't need tabs. It's obvious that, that that's fine. That's probably going to be our MDI frame. Um, but if as long as it's not thread one, we're going to start a thread and stop a thread. And starting a thread and stopping a thread is done by the sync object, of course. And starting a thread, uh, it, its job is simply to say, I want to um, create a new thread queue entry. Uh, and, and then when it stops the thread, uh, it goes ahead and does this. Now I wonder if set active thread. Yeah, interesting. We probably need to do something similar here. So delete thread queue. Um, I'm wondering if this is a good time to say, well, you know what? I'm going to leave it from here. Setting the active thread. Uh, we, and we might actually stop setting the active thread here. We may change it so that it says uh, it's based upon prop system active. Uh, or sorry, system prop active which gives us the actual active thread and do it on a gain focus. We're gonna be playing a bit of a dance here to figure out how it knows when it goes from one thread to another thread. Uh, and gain focus is, is of course the event that happens when it gets a thread, but there may be some things that need to happen inside of here uh, using this active thread. So we're gonna leave it there for the moment, but uh, when a thread goes away, I don't know which thread it's gonna to go to. Windows just kind of 
figures that out. So I'd rather uh, this thing happen later once I get a gain focus event. So I'm doing this here just in case, uh, in case the, the, my classes need the, the current thread, the active thread uh, variable to be set. But when it comes time to switching threads, we'll, uh, we'll worry about that later. And there is a chance that it would end up uh, um, when the thread goes away, that it would try and do some other stuff and go, wait a second, I haven't got the active thread changed yet and I'm confused. We'll deal with that later if it comes up. I don't think it's gonna happen, but it's a possibility. So anyway, uh, so that's what happens is the thread is automatically initialized. There's already gonna be a queue entry in this queue. There's gonna be a thread number, there's a, whether or not it's hidden, uh, and what the text is supposed to be, and then a stack of windows that have been called within that particular thread. So the first thing we wanna do is we know that our thread has now been started and now this is the first window appearing on the thread. And we have to say, okay, great. We know the thread, the queue thread entry is there, but we want to actually say, hey, I am now appearing before you and I would like the, the tab to be set appropriately. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to say um, that we wanna be able to set the text on this thing. And I think there's already a set text method in our window class. Here's our window class here, ultimate tabs window, construct, destruct, set text. So we're gonna say we wanna set the text because the window is first come to being. So let's go ahead and come back to our application and our thing comes up. And do we want to do it in the init? Well, we might have to do, perhaps, we might need to do this here. Uh, we need to take, um, I wonder here, we need to make sure that we take events. So I want to go, uh, for now I'm going to code them here, take gain, take event. We may end up, once we decide which, events we care about, we may go to the trouble of registering those events so they all get trapped behind the scenes. Uh, but for now, let's uh, let's make sure that, you know, that we can actually follow the code in, in how things are going to happen. So we're going to have a take event method. Uh, and it can deal with the whole situation of what's happening here. Oop. There. And we're going to say self.setText to be whatever our text is. So it's gonna be zero uh, self text. And, uh, and you know what, let's make that parameter optional. And what'll happen when the parameter is optional is it will say, oh, you haven't told me an explicit bit of text. In that case, I shall simply borrow the text from your window caption, whatever that happens to be. So we'll make this an optional parameter. And we'll come back here. We need to make uh, set text there. And then let's say if I uh, do it like this, choose if not omitted text, then use text. Otherwise, go zero prop text there and close print. So all we're doing is we're saying if if uh, the text parameter has actually been passed, if it's not omitted then use whatever text I've been told to use. Otherwise, just grab it off the window structure. Let's just make sure this runs. I think this will run just fine. It's not gonna do anything yet because we're not actually creating a tab or anything. And good. Um, oh, sorry, we didn't actually uh, run our uh, procedure. Good, okay. <clears throat> But just for fun, let's now say um, take event. Oh, and we're just doing set text constantly every single time we did a set take event, which is not what we'd want to do. We would want to say um, MDI uh, task go, what do we want to do here? Case event, because this is a take event of event open window. So for now, let's just set the text um, else of event. I'm pretty sure gain focus is going to be important. Um, self dot uh, set active thread. And we don't have that ability to do that from the MDI tabs window method yet. Or, so we need something similar to that. So where is our set active thread? 
Um, <laughs> so we're going to copy that, but it's not going to be quite the same here. Oh, we've actually got a gain focus already. So we're going to we're going to make that. We've got a special method for handling that. So we'll deal with that. So set active thread. Um, I don't think we need to pass it in because when the window is saying it, the window says obviously it's my thread. Uh, so let's do that. Um, there we go. And we're going to say sync dot set active thread uh, thread. Now that's good. And then gain focus. Uh, but that's the whole reason I did gain focus. Ah, interesting. So we may not need set active thread actual, after all. Right, look at that. So gain focus, just going to say self dot gain focus. Good. So let's get rid of that. Let's come back to here. Let's go there. Sync. Actually, we should do this here. So it turns out we don't need this one after all. Uh, we'll just temporarily take that away. I'm going to leave it there for the moment. I don't think we're going to need it, but maybe we'll put something else there. My gain focus. Um, and um, let's try, I wonder if open window, because I like this idea of the window class doing as much stuff as possible, the base class, so we don't have to do anything in the local class. So let's go ahead and uh, take, let's change this to take gain focus, take open window. And you know what? I just realized we've got a take event thing there. Eh, you know what? Maybe we should just say take event here. Take event might make more sense. Yeah, let's do that. Um, get rid of those for the moment. Let's just say here, um, let's copy this. Just leave a bit of detritus about is fine. Uh, and here we're gonna say, Take event, there, lovely. And then we're gonna come back here and now we're just gonna say, uh, all of this stuff goes away to the other place. There. Gain focus, and so we'll say, what do we do gain focus, we do this. If we ever do more than that, then we'll perhaps put it into a separate procedure, uh, maybe locally in here. Like if this if this chunk of code starts becoming too big, then I'm going to start breaking the logic into separate pieces. Um, and then when we do the open window, we set text. Um, and actually, you know, at all points, we really need to say set text, not just when the window is open. All events should do that. Uh, let's do it last though. So for now, I, we don't need to do anything on open window, but maybe we will. Uh, on gain focus, we definitely need to set the active thread. Uh, and then uh, we have to make sure we call this method. So this method now, I think we've got inside of here. Yeah, there's take event. And there's the init method. And then we're going to say this window dot take event. And we're just going to say MDI tab window. Uh, take event there. So now we're taking the event and let's just make sure that the event is being taken. So we're going to jump back here and we're going to say, uh, do we have debugging here? Not yet. Let's get it in here. Um, ST uh, include stdebug.eq. Oh, I see. But let's take a look at the EQ, stdebug.eq. Good. Okay. That's weird, why is it doing that one? Oh, whatever, it's fine, it's getting in there, it'll work. Um, okay, so we've got the debug there, and now that we've got the debug there, we can say, uh, let's just say st colon colon debug, um, and st colon colon, let's go take event, event, st colon colon debug event name, there. I just wanna see what happens. Let's get uh, debug view plus plus. Where is it? Find it, find it, find it. I just, there it is. 
too many window button thingies. Where's it going? Weird. Ah, okay, there it is over there. Wanted to be really small and off to the side. So here's debug view. And let's go ahead and do this. And let's make sure that we actually have events happening. Missing procedure, huh? Really? Ah, I know why that is. It's because we told, told that we would have one here, but we don't. It's now in the base class, which is why I was saying that uh, we don't wanna work too much at, at coding the stuff at the top level because pretty much everything that wants to happen, we wanna hide as much of the functionality as we can in the base class itself. So there. Uh, so we've just done that. Let's come over here and say, hey, look, we've got a select thing. We got a gain focus open window. That's interesting. We have gain focus before open window. That's useful to know. Um, that means that uh, the, that side of it is not a big deal there. Okay, so sized, resized, moved, selected, new selection. So all of these are the normal events we norm expect to see in a window. So there we go. Uh, so we know that it's getting inside of our code and now we can start uh, going a little further because the next step we wanna do is now that it's inside of our code, we'd like it to create a little tab right here to represent the window that's opening up much like this tab shows up here. So let's go ahead and make that happen. Now we're gonna jump down to here uh, and we have said set active thread, which automatically happens. And then it says set text. So set active thread, I just wanna see what that thing does. I'm pretty sure it just sets internal variable, but let's just double check. Uh, yeah, that's all it does. Oh, and it updates the tabs, right. Uh, so we know we have an active thread and then it updates the tabs. And what does it do when it updates the tabs? I think right now, probably nothing. Update tabs, to do, there we go. <laughs> I knew it. Okay, uh, so now what we need to do is, uh, I assume we need, ah, yep. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we have to now talk to the frame. Well, the frame is running on a thread. So we have to know where the frame is. And I'm pretty sure we had a frame thread already somewhere. Is it in here? Where is our internal class here? Yes, right here, frame thread. Do we have a, a method to set it? Set active thread. We also need a set frame thread. Uh, so we're going to uh, do that. Uh, and then we also need to, uh, so let's go set active thread. Where was that? There we go. So we're just gonna copy this thing and do the exact same thing with this. Set frame thread. Thread is dead, sync weight, uh, frame thread equals that. Uh, we don't need to update the tabs. So we can tighten that up a little bit. Uh, now, uh, we want to uh, create a similar procedure in our um, base class for the frame. Or actually we don't because we can just do that on the init method. So let's go back to our frame uh, class here. Here's our frame class init and we're gonna say sync.set frame thread thread. So now our base synchronization class, the, the place that knows about everything, it now knows which thread the frame is on because the frame has now told it, I am here. And the benefit of that is that now when we want to have it uh, come in and say, set the active thread, set the active thread says, update the tabs update the tabs has to now do something nice with them, but the tab isn't even necessarily set yet. So what I would like to do potentially is, well, set text. Yeah, okay. So here's an interesting thing we're gonna be doing is, here is our, um, uh, our, uh, our threads, where we're doing our threads here in the stack and there are the thread queue. So the thread three has a, a thread, but for each thread, we may be creating an instance of a tab. Uh, so we have to know whether or not it's been created. So we're gonna say tab fec. When it's first creating this thread, 
uh, or this thread queue record, uh, it won't know what the tab vec is because it doesn't even know if it needs one yet. It hasn't been told to put anything on the screen. So initially, when the thread queue is the record is created, it's just going to say, "Hey, yeah, I'm just going to sit here. It's going to have a, a, a zero value to start with." So we've got this lovely tab vec. But then when somebody comes along and says, I want to set the text on the tab, it has to say, oh, okay, for which thread you want to set that on? Oh, I don't even have a tab for that thread. I better create one. Uh, and then it automatically creates the, the, the thing in the frame thread itself. So let's do that. So we have this update tabs concept, update uh, tabs. Do we call update tabs? We must call it with a set text as well. Set text, I want to see what looks, set text looks like. We set text and yes, we update tabs right there. Cool. So uh, we've put the thread queue and then we update tabs. So we're now going to um, jump down to, uh, da, 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 da. how are we gonna do this? So we take event, oh, we're gonna do an update tabs, update tabs, oops. There we go. Now, this is where we need to talk to the frame. So think about what we need to do here. We are now at the point where the window manager, uh, like the window object has said, hey, internal object, I'd like to set the, the text for my tab. The tab doesn't even exist yet. The tab is a responsibility of the frame. So at the base class, it's saying, okay, I've got this thread record in the queue. Uh, but I need to actually set the tab accordingly. So I have to send a request to the frame to go and change the tab's text. And if you haven't even got a tab yet, you need to do that too. So what it will do here is it's going to um, uh, send a, uh, a message to the frame of what, uh, just say update yourself with a with new text. Um, and you'll notice that if we took a look at update tabs again, here, I want to see, show you where it's called here. Uh, so when we're setting the text, uh, it sets the text in the queue. So we know what the text is supposed to be. And then we're calling update tabs. Update tabs is going to be the responsibility of the frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, da, da, update tabs, we just say, I need to tell the frame to do something. So we have to say, if, first of all, we're going to say, if self, well, we probably, this is the sync is dead, hide tab, false, I again, focus, this is good. Okay, so we want to say um, is dead. Oh, we don't even need that. We can just say if, um, if self.frame thread equals zero, then return. Because I can't do anything if I don't have a frame. And then we're gonna say uh, post event. Um, uh, what do we want? Event uh, user, user plus, I don't know. There, a nice random number. Um, that, or actually, you know what? Let's, let's have this be a name. I don't want to just randomly do that. So we're going to come back to this point. Let's go up for the moment here and create a method or an equate called. Yeah, well, let's do some equates up here. Event, um, update, tabs, procedure. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Equate. Now you'll notice that this is just internally in this procedure, so it really could be anything. It's probably gonna be safe being whatever number, we hope. Um, unfortunately, there's no way to register events to say, I'd like to reserve that event just for me, so nobody else accidentally uses that same user event. So we're just hoping that we're getting lucky here and, and not using an event number that uh, somebody else wants to have, but we're probably gonna be fine. So event update tabs. So we're posting that event and we don't want it to post it to a particular field equate, but we do wanna post it to self.frame thread. And that so far, that's all it's gonna do. It's just gonna say, hey frame, could, could you deal with the tabs please? You've been asked to update them. And now the frame has to deal with that. So how does our frame do that? Well, obviously it needs to be watching for these events. So it needs its own take event method. 
Uh, da, 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 da. And then we're going to go down to our frames here. The frames are right here. And copy this there. And it's taking events. We're going to say case, if, oops, caps lock case event um, of event colon uh, update tabs. What are we going to do? The first thing we need to do is we need to look at the queue to find out do we have a, uh, a tab created already for that particular uh, for that particular um, uh, thread. So, uh, and of course, we need to do it talking to the sync uh, manager thing here. So we're going to say sync dot um, uh, wait sync dot release to so make sure we do it on the other end and we're going to say self dot get is it fetch don't we have a, or sorry sync dot fetch fetch thread queue for now here it's an optional parameter but we want to fetch it for the currently active thread so we're going to say uh, sync uh, so it's going to be sync dot active thread and we know this is safe to do all the sync stuff because we've just done a wait and a release. So we're just going to say, go get uh, go get the record for the current active thread. Because otherwise, you'll notice the, the fetch thread queue is, I think, automatically grabs the, the current, yeah, for the current thread that's running. And in this case, this is the frame. He needs to be able to touch any threads data. So he needs to say, for the one that's currently active, um, now that it is, is an interesting thing because we're assuming that it is the current active thread, but every single window could potentially be updating the tabs even in the background. So that's not quite safe yet. So what we additionally have to do is, I think we might have to do um, in, our, in our event management here, if you recall, uh, when you do a post, you can post to a particular control on a particular thread, but I don't believe you can pass through extra data. Uh, post. No, you can't. So we can't use post. We have to use notify. Um, so uh, we're going to change this to uh, notify, update tabs. Uh, and let's just make this one. Uh, in fact, let's make this uh, itemized because we might have others. Make sure it starts in one. So now this is going to be a little different. It's going to say note to phi. And we want the notification code is that. And the thread is being passed through as that. And then finally, we get to pass through a long parameter. And the parameter is the thread from which it's being updated. Because it's saying, uh, because when we update the threads, we have to know which one is, uh, well, that's an interesting point. Does it even care? Maybe it doesn't care. This is an interesting little thing. So we've got like three different things going on at the same time. All these three different, we've got this internal thing. We've got a window manager. We've got a frame manager. And figuring out whose responsibility is to touch what is kind of intriguing. So when we've said, hey, I want you to update the text and update the tabs, in reality, what we have to do is we actually have to have it smart enough to check on all the tabs. So we actually don't even care which one is coming from, but you know what, let's just in case, well, you know what, I think my, the notify thread automatically comes through when we do notify. So that's handy. We, we don't even need to set uh, that extra option yet. We don't have to pass through, here's the current thread number because when you get a notification, just to show you here a notification, you'll notice that it comes through with the, uh, the, the code that you're passing in and the thread that is uh, the, the sent the notification. So if we care about the act of th the thread being the sending it, that's already dealt with. But what we really want to do is we want to just say, just check the tabs. 
make sure the tabs are good, make sure they show what needs to be shown. So in reality, we don't even want to fetch a particular thread. We want to go through all the threads and check that. So let's just say, hey, we want to do update tabs to the frame thread. We may eventually pass additional information with that third parameter on notify, but for now, let's not do that. So now we're doing this. The take event is going to be a little different. Uh, where's our take event? Here we go. So now the event is not going to be update tabs. The event is in event notify. I think it is event notify. Yeah. Uh, and then what we need to do is we need to go, um, and let's do it like this. Let's go take notification. Well, let's not do that. Let's go notification. Now it wants to have a notify code. It wants to have a notify thread and, uh, and a notify parameter. We're probably not going to use all of these, but let's just grab them anyway. Um, and I just want to see what the types are. So it was so unsigned, signed, and long. So unsigned, signed, and long. And they are called notify code, notify thread, and notify parameter. So those are now being coming in for us here. We'll grab the notification. We're going to do the sync, uh, wait and release. And um, I've decided that I want to make this a little more map. Uh, let's go um, update tabs. Do you want to do it here or do it as a separate method? Yeah, we'll do it here for now. Uh, or do we? Eh, I don't know. Where'd I go here? Yeah, I think we'll do this as a separate method. If uh, case notify code um, of uh, notify update tabs, uh, self dot update tabs there. And just for fun, let's pass in the notify thread and the notify parameter. I don't think we're gonna need them, but uh, we know that they are um, uh, da -da 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 signed notify thread and a long notify parameter. There. Now we come back up here. We don't need this stuff there anymore because that's going to be down here. Uh, so all this thing, remember, this is going to be taking that stuff there. We have to make sure that this thing has been added to the uh, base class here, take event. Update tabs there, lovely. So here we are, we are taking update tabs. Uh, and if you remember, I just said, the responsibility of this method is to take a look at the tabs that it currently has and make sure that the tabs fully represent everything that's going on in, the, um, in terms of what the queue says should be there right now. So the sync, wait and release is gonna be the same thing. But now what we're going to say is we're going to say tab, um, let's make it a sign because it's in a field equate, tab fec. Nope, not fec. It's going to be tab um, index. It's not the fec itself. Let's go tab index. I'm going to say loop tab index equals one. Oh, I think better than that tab index, let's call it thread index, because that's what we're really going to be going through the thread queue. So that's better to do and make this auto because we're going to set it down here. Loop thread index equals one, two records, uh, self uh, sync. No, it's going to be thread queue. There, get thread queue. Thread index, there. We've got loop written, lovely. Now, what are we gonna do with this? We're gonna say, first of all, we wanna check, we're gonna say if um, thread, uh, there's a few things we wanna check here. So we wanna check for things like, um, is there text? Is, and maybe an overriding thing is, is it 
visible. Visible. I don't care what that is. It uh, does it have text? Does it have text? Do we have a tab? These are all things we care about. Priority wise, I think it should be in that order. So we're, the first thing we're going to say is if thread q dot is hidden. So if not, or how should I do it like like it this way? If if is hidden, then cycle. Well, not necessarily. If is hidden. We want to say, um, is thread q dot uh, tab fac equals zero? Then it's good. Yes, that's great. So if there's no tab and it's supposed to be hidden anyway, then that's perfect. Uh, if there is a tab, uh, we want to say if thread q dot um tab fec prop hide so it's supposed to be hidden so we're going to say if it's not hidden then we're going to say hide it equals true cycle so we care about is it visible uh so right now it's dealing with is it hidden So we'll check first of all um, that. So if it's hidden, if it's not hidden, then we're coming down to it's visible. So this is else. So it's not hidden. Uh, so now we want to make sure that there's a tab. So now we're going to say uh, it's a similar kind of thing here. We're going to say, do we have a tab? If we don't, we have to create it. So we're going to say uh, thread q dot tab fec equals create this lovely command create zero doesn't want to show me the other version of create let's go to the help create create a control create a control control create a new control there we go this is the structure we're trying to do here So it's going to look like that. So the control number that we want to create, we're just going to say zero, which says create whatever one is next. The type is going to be create colon tab. Uh, the parent is going to be um, sync dot sheet. Oh, sorry, self self dot sheet sheet fact. And the position is not important. So what this has just done now is it's basically said, OK, uh, this thing's supposed to be visible, but we don't have a, a tab yet, so we better create one. So it creates the tab. Um, but additionally, what we should maybe do is we should say um, thread q uh, text. Oops. Because we want to make sure there's actually text visible. Because if there's no text visible, then um, I would add this here, or uh, thread q q dot text equals blank. So if it's hidden or the text is blank, then um, we just want to make sure that there's either no tab or that it's hidden. Uh, otherwise, if there, we don't have to do this check now because it would have been caught above. So now we know that it's not supposed to be hidden and or there is some text. Well, actually, we can still check. So really what we want to do is the most important thing is, is there text? Because you could have text, but have it hidden. So let's check that first. Uh, before I do anything else, let's say if if that, then, um, then it's hidden. Well, yeah. We may end up refactoring this. I, I, I hate these complex chunks of stuff like this and really start uh, complicating the world more than it needs to. Um, okay, so we have the text here, we have it hidden. Uh, and then we're going to, uh, so this should be fine here. If it, the text is visible, then 
Uh, if it's hidden, we uh, don't even care. So the, the, the concept of being hidden is still comes into play. So it really does need to be that, doesn't it? Or that. So if it's blank or hidden, otherwise it's not blank and not hidden. So we do have to check to see is um, if it's, yeah, we still need to check to see if it's gonna be hidden here because if it's hidden, then we don't wanna do anything. Is hidden, then we're gonna cycle. Potentially, well, but maybe not. We may still have to hide it. And we could maybe, you know what? I think I like the idea of doing these things as individual steps. Let's just say uh, hide, let's say hide. Yeah, let's go do hide uh, tab. I'm just, I'm getting irritated with all this extra code here. Um, <laughs> cycle. Uh, and then this is going to be exit. So this is responsible for hiding the tab. Uh, if there's no tab, then of course we can't hide it. If there is a tab, then we hide it. Good. And we don't need, uh, yeah, it's fine. Um, This would be just as good. There. Lovely. Good. Uh, so that is the concept of hiding a tab. I don't know that we have to do a cycle here. We may need to, but for now, if we're supposed to be hidden, let's just hide it and get out. There, that's much cleaner in there. Now, if it's not supposed to be hidden and there's an, or there's some text to be seen, then we wanna say, um, else if that does not equal zero, meaning or does not blank. So now we have some text to display, then we're gonna say do unhide tab. I'm not gonna cycle right away here. And the first thing we're gonna say is, we're gonna say, da, 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 da. Uh, we wanna create another little routine, very similar. I'm gonna say unhide tab now, there we go. And it's gonna do something very similar. Um, if it's hidden, then make it not hidden. Uh, and then we are going to also do the create here. Tab equals zero, then we're gonna create it. And then we're gonna say um, thread q.tab fec prop text equals, uh, what's it gonna be? Um, thread q dot text. Un, and then I'm gonna say hide equals false. That might be all we need. So we're gonna unhide the tab. So we automatically check, do we have a tab? Oh, we don't have a tab, let's create it. Let's set the text, let's un unhide it. Uh, but because we're unhiding it anyway, uh, let's just go like that. Good, uh, because it should automatically have the hide attribute at this point. So that should be fine. So good, so here we are. Uh, we're looping through, we're saying, is, uh, is there no text or is it hidden? Then go ahead and hide it. Otherwise, as long as there's text there, let's go unhide tab. And then let's um, let's go um, let's 
And you know what? Because this is here, I don't even need to set that yet. I can do that up here. There, lovely. I may eventually have to do more stuff than when it's first created, but I don't think so. So we're basically saying we know that there is text. So this is reading much cleaner now. Good. So if it's supposed to be hidden, hide it. Otherwise, unhide it and then set the text to whatever it's supposed to be. Down here, when it unhides it, it says, do we even have it if we don't have it created? And then go ahead and unhide it. And that might be enough for the moment. Is it visible? We check that. Do we have a tab? We check that. Does it have text there? Um, and then finally, what we may want to do is we may want to additionally say, um, because just to prevent flicker, it's always sometimes good to check this. I'm not even sure that it's that important anymore, but let's say if that does not equal the text that's supposed to be, then let's go ahead and set it. And then that way it leaves it alone. There, potentially this could do it right here. Oh, you know what? Additionally, it needs to, ah, very important. Yes, uh, you change that. Uh, so we have to say put thread queue here. Because we've just set a we've set a variable in the tab in the thread queue, and we have to make sure we put the value back in there. So let's just see what happens here. Unhide tab. Oh, unhide tab. Oh, is that what it's called? A hide tab. Oh, that may be a problem. Let's see what happens here. Now, not yet. Okay, so now we have to figure out why not. Because I think we've got the pieces in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, we know that when it's taking event, it's getting this. So sync active window thread, and then self dot set text. And set text just says uh, that. Cool. Um, does the thing have text already? So we should be seeing this and all these event names in here automatically. So let's just double check and make sure we're still seeing that in, where's debug view? I've lost it. Did I close it? I must have closed it. Open it again. Is our application still running? Can't recall. Don't think so. So let's just run it again. Debug view. Okay, so here was all of our events. So we know that it got inside of our take event method, which is here, which means that it must have been calling set text. So let's just see if set text knows what it's doing here. So I'm going to do that temporarily. And then I'm going to come up to set text. And we're going to say uh, debug set text. In fact, let's do the whole thing here. Set text, uh, and it's going to be, um, and I just want to see what the window is here. I just realized well, there's another spot we can do set text. This here. And it's sync dot set text, and it's going to have whatever the text is. Text. Good. What have we got in our debug thing here? Set browse customers. Good. So that's happening. Lovely. So we've got that piece working fine. So we're good up to this point. We are calling self dot update tabs. Uh, so let's go here and update tabs, uh, calls, notify, notify update tabs of the frame thread. Let's just make sure it's getting here. I'm pretty darn sure it would be. And there, and there's no text to do. And 
update tabs. Good, lovely. It's getting called over and over again really quick. Uh, and we may want to have it called less often, potentially. Um, we may, we can always optimize that later, but right now every single event is calling this thing and then for every single one it's going through and checking all the tabs. That's a bit intense, uh, but we can always optimize things later. Okay, so we have this notification happening. Now we have to make sure the notification is getting through. So let's come over to event, take event, notify. And this is now notify take event. Make sure this is happening here. Um, uh, let's keep uh, uh, event name. Good. And make sure that happens here. I just want to make sure we're actually getting the stuff we should be getting here. Bang and bang and bang. Uh, update tabs, interesting, we're not getting notification. Okay, so this is a good thing to check here. Set, uh, so we wanna, where's our notify? Okay, what is the frame thread? Let's just say stop here. No, we don't wanna do that. Too many of them. Debug. Let's say frame thread equals uh, that. Oops. Oh, did we close? Oh, it must have closed our debug view again. Lovely. Uh, where is it there? back here and then run it there, there, there. Here we got frame thread is one. So it does know what the frame thread is. Good. Did I just make a mistake with the notify statement possibly? So notify is here. Notify code and the thread and the parameter. Okay, so it's sending it to the proper thread. So we know this is fine. And the frame thread is not zero, so that's fine. So we're back to this issue of take event here. So we should be seeing these events come through and for some reason we're not. Huh. Just check that again. And it appears that I've gone and closed debug view again somehow. I don't know how I managed to keep doing that. There. Interesting. Ah, I know exactly why. A very stupid error. Window dot take event. Nope. Take event. We're not actually taking the events. MDI tabs frame dot take event. There, that might help. Hey, look what we got there, John. Look at that. Look at that. You top gunned it, man. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that works. Now, uh, a little more. Open another. Open there. another one. What happens if you open another well, one? It should, it should work just fine. Oh, well, there you go. Cool. Now, when it closes, I don't think it, it doesn't quite work because you'll notice that they aren't going away. Uh, so we have to be smart enough to um, have it do that as well. Uh, oh, that's an interesting thing. So when a thread disappears, it has to tell the frame that a given thread is closing. So get rid of a particular tab. So it, we need another notification for that. And the reason we do that is because if you recall, we have this lovely um, uh, instance thing here. Here's our instance thing here. Uh, so when our instance comes in, we start a thread and we stop a thread. When we stop a thread, it's gonna delete our thread queue record. And then it says uh, to the thread, uh, it's gonna say, fine, we're gonna delete that. And then it has to somehow know that that thing has gone away, but the thread queue record's already gone. The frame doesn't even know 
you know, it theoretically it knows it has tabs, but it doesn't know which tab corresponds with which thread. So it has to be explicitly told, you must delete thread such and such. So what we're going to do is we've got the stop thread uh, thing here, which we can uh, piggyback on. Start thread, stop thread. If it says dead, uh, so we're going to say thread equals this, get the thread number by the thread. If it's uh, equal to no error, then before we delete the thread, we want to say um, self, like we say notify, and we need no notify code. So it's going to say notify uh, delete tab. Is it destroy or destroy? Is it destroy? What is it? I think it's destroy tab. Um, uh, self dot frame thread cell oh then uh, thread q dot uh, th thread no tab tech so we should also check here because we may not have a frame at this point so we need to do that if that is not equal zero And I don't like having, so here's a perfect example of a place where I immediately refactor. We have this concept of, okay, we're, we're fetching a thread record. And as long as there's no error, we were deleting the thread record. That made a nice story. Now what's this crap in here? This just suddenly says, wait a second, what are you talking about? Where did that character come from? We need, a, we need it to be extracted out into separate little spots. So we're gonna say do uh, delete uh, tell frame to remove tab, to destroy tab, destroy tab. There, and now this tells a nice little story. We get the thread. We say there's no error, fine. Tell the frame to destroy the tab and delete the thread queue. So this is lovely. Uh, now we need to deal with this, notify the, wait, now we've got another notification. Now we have to go back to the, uh, where is it here? The window tabs here, update tabs, here we go. Nope, that's not where we're doing it. Take event, yes, that's where we're doing it here. So notify code, and then we're gonna say update tabs. So now we're gonna say of that, and now we're going to say, uh, we want to destroy a tab. Now the question is, what's involved in destroying a tab? And I think it might be a single line of code. Um, what is the command? Oh, okay, let's, do we still have the help open? No, we don't. Okay. Is so it destroy? Create, well, I'm not, it might be, but I, but I have a feeling removing control, it is destroy. Yeah, I was thinking it probably was. Okay, so we don't actually need to do anything in particular here because, uh, where are we here? We've just been told which thing it is. It's the notify parameter. So we're going to say um, notify code. Oh, sorry, destroy, destroy. And maybe we want to just double check if notify parameter is not equal zero. Got to make sure. Um, and, um, and just to double check one further, I don't think it would be an issue, but let's just double check. We'll say, and notify parameter prop, um, what is it? Prop type, I think it's type, um, equals create tab. That should be good like that. If both those things are true, then we can destroy that. Um, notify parameter. Now, even this bugs me. Because you notice in this case, we said do this. That was nice. This, and then we get all this stuff. Notify parameter, notify parameter. What Notify parameter, what is notify parameter? Oh, it's the control that's supposed to be happening. Well, my code no longer reads like it really is doing something intelligible. So at this point, I want to create uh, some kind of a function that I where I can pass in a parameter and have that parameter named for what it's really being used for. Uh, and I don't know that I need this to when I'm destroying it, I don't know that I need to make this into a method of its own. 
uh, perhaps I would, perhaps I want, to, I want it to be uh, doable. So, but at the first step, I would start here and I'd say destroy tab uh, procedure, procedure uh, signed tab fec. So here we go. And then here we can say uh, destroy tab. And now we understand that the notify parameter is the thing we're passing in. And then we come down here, there. But now instead of saying notify parameter, we can say if, if the tab fact is not zero and the type is a tab, then go ahead and destroy it. And suddenly this code makes perfect sense. You go, oh, oh, I see what it's doing now. And then up here, it's just saying, oh, let's just do these two things here. I said, well, we're gonna update the tabs or maybe we're gonna destroy a tab. Oh, good, clear. Now, there is a chance that in some point in the future, the whoever is deriving this thing in the frame cares when a tab is destroyed and maybe needs to do something special. So what I'm gonna suggest is we change this to be an actual method in the class. So we're going to take that out of there. Uh, we'll just jump over here real quick and we'll say in it, we're gonna say destroy tab. Um, and we're going to make it virtual so that if we want to uh, do that, and for that matter, we should probably make this virtual too. And update tab, sure, why not? Who knows? I, for the moment, it wouldn't be able to do anything too useful because everything that's done inside of update tabs uh, is uh, uh, requires the internal access, but maybe we just want to know that it is updating tabs might be useful. So uh, we'll make that virtual while we're at it. So then we do that and then we come back to here and now this thing gets moved. Actually, it just goes like this. And while we're at it, let's just move it up here. There. There we go. And now our code is reading quite nicely. Uh, and now let's see if, okay, are we destroying the tab? I can't remember. Did we actually call destroy tab? from, yes, notification, tell frame to destroy tab, bingo, yay, good. Lovely. Okay, so let's run it and see what happens. Start it, gets created, stop it, gets destroyed. Look at that, spectacular. There you go. So it, it kind of sort of works. Um, now let's just play with it a little bit here. So let's go, um, let's see if we can make the hiding and unhiding work correctly. Uh, so we're gonna come up to here, browse customers, was it? I think is the one we were working with. Let's see here, yep, right there. Uh, what does the init do again? Oh, we don't even do anything in the init at the moment, nothing. All we're calling is, is the, uh, I think just the take event is the only thing we do. Take event and yeah, don't even do an init. Um, anyway, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into this little window and I'm going to uh, add, I don't know, a little button somewhere, another button. Uh, let's go control toolbox button there. And let's just stick it here. Somewhere. Good. Uh, and then we're just going to say, um, Let's change the text for it here. Properties. Uh, where's our button? Why didn't it immediately highlight our button? What's our button called? Button one? Really? Nope. So where did our button go to? Weird. Yeah, we're in this weird window thing. See, I clicked on my button and it's still selecting the window and the properties. So we're just, just to be overly prudent so we don't explode in the middle of nowhere. No, just for fun. Let's get out of here and go back in again. That is so strange. I mean, I haven't had this problem in 630 like for a long, long time. Uh -huh. um, now we'll go back to browse customers window. Uh, da -da. And then go, here's the button. And now we show the button and let's just change to uh, toggle um, tab. And let's go button 
toggle tab. save that for a second. You know what? Let's go back in here. Let's go right click and let's go uh, embeds. Action accepted. Um, source larg. And then we'll go here and here and here. And we're going to say tab hidden. Cool. False. There. And then we're going to search for that. If self dot tab. Oh, sorry. If tab hidden. Um, MDI tabs window dot hide tab. Else. MDI tabs window dot unhide tab. Oh, and now we may want to go. Um, true. Oh, actually, uh, we're backwards. If it's hidden, then we want to unhide it. And there. Yeah, let's see if this will work. I don't remember if we coded this, so let's see if it's coded. Oh, not coded. So uh, let us see what we do in our class. When we call hide tab and unhide tab, doesn't do squat, sync, hide tab. Unhide tab, there, bet you that'll work now. Or take us closer anyway. Hidden, unhidden, ha <laughs> ha, look at that. Now, let's, um, let's try changing the text. Okay, so let's see, um, uh, I go a window again, let's add another button. You know what, let's do it like this here. Easier, properties window. There, uh, change text. And I don't know how wide is this. See, let's make it uh, 210. Should be enough. Um, button change text. And then let's go here and here and go. Actually, hold on. It's easier to do this in the window. Here we go. Oh, well, they didn't go far enough over. Whatever. Oh, boy. Okay, right click. Let's go embeds. Let's go. Interesting. Hold on. Did I move the wrong one? Change text. How did that happen? Oh, I know why. Idiot. Look at this. Check this out here. Uh, properties. Uh, I made the slight mistake of I ended up having two controls of the same ordinal. So it ended up uh, tacking on. I don't know if it created two copies of it, but let's try. Uh, well, you know, before we go too far here, let's go in and just see if it has anything behind here still. Might have, I, I've never, I, I, it's very rare for me to, to forget to take that sequence off there. So I'm not even sure what happened here. So it's gone from here. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to, um, I want to just, I wanted to keep that little thing here. So let's just take 33, let's change this to 33 and 32. There. Now it'll get its logic back. So if we check this one again here, we go embeds. Oh, interesting. Where to go? Embeds. Wacky. Okay, so that didn't help at all. Oh well. I assumed that by changing the uh, the uh, sequence that it would automatically uh, uh, move that embed over, but it didn't. That's kind of interesting. So embeds. I'm probably broken clarion now. Oh, well. So I am going to say, actually, I don't need to do any of this stuff. I just need to say zero prop um, text equals, uh, and let's go like that, plus one. Sure, why not? And I'm going to do one other thing. 
because we've changed something and we want the window text to automatically reflect that, uh, we need to uh, change the spot where we do the take event. Um, from here, the top of this down to, uh, yeah, I don't know. Where's a good place to do this here? Maybe here. Um, so what'll happen here is if looped, then return level notify, it does a take event, and then it returns the actual value, and then there's the end of the loop in here, and it returns that. So yeah, this is the right place. This is the bottom of the accept loop. Yes. Um, theoretically, it could show up there too, but whatever. Um, take event. Yeah, that's pretty much the only place we can safely do it because it's returning out of each of those spots. So we have to make sure we come in and do it before that happens. Theoretically, we could do this if we wanted to, but then it's going to call it twice, but it's going to be fatal. So we don't even care about it in that case. Now well, let's just put it there. And now let's see if by changing the text on the thing, it will automatically. Unresolved external DCT in it. Yeah. Restart <laughs> Clarion. You. Yeah, I told you I broke Clarion, didn't I? <laughs> you broke it. <laughs> I broke restart it. Restart. Yeah, I just got to uh, cancel. Um, I, you might I, um, try the 11.1 .1 IDE sometimes, see if that works a little bit better. Yeah, I, I should jump off to that. I'm just so used to working in 11. It just sort of sits there. It's on my toolbar. I just hit it. Um, there aren't a lot of things that I need to use 11.1 for, so, uh, but I should jump onto it. Okay. Now, uh, what was I asked? Right, we're just gonna shoot and go bang here. Now, if we change the text, oh, oh, you know what? Uh, this must be backwards. Yeah, somehow I've yep. got these things backwards. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but I just want to show, try something here. So there's the second instance. If we go back to this one, so that can still do that. Mm. You can hide it, unhide it, hide it, unhide it. Yeah. Cool. So it's kind of sort of working, John. It's kind of sort of working. Yeah. Now, what happens when you click on the tabs? Nothing yet, right? We don't. Nothing we haven't yet. got that no, far. We haven't got that far. It's, and that and we well, you know what? That's not a tough thing to do. Um, and, and not only that, when we change from one tab to the other here, it should, oh, well, that's working somehow. How did that work? <laughs> that's interesting. That's, that's good though. I mean, yeah. Well, no, it's not. It's like, it's- Because you don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Like we haven't done anything to say, change the active tab, but ultimately the active tab is being changed. I think you kind of did. You had it so it's it does a, well, no, maybe you no, didn't. No, you did a gain focus. You did a gain focus and you did a call off to- What we um, should have done is a the choice tab. fec, like a prop selected. Like we should change the, the sheet's choice fec based upon the current tab that got notification. I thought you, I thought you did like a tab existed type of thing. Is that where yes, it's getting Yes, we did, it? but that's not where it's getting it. And oh. somehow, I, I, that's that's a mystery to me. That's really interesting because I'm not, because to do that, you have to physically change the current tab. I am not changing the current tab anywhere. That's really odd. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is okay, so that, that piece is working just fine. But what we can do is, is we might be able to, what time we got here? Well, we're almost two o'clock. Uh, so what we would do next is, um, when we clicked on a different tab 
and it stopped working, you notice now. So I don't know oh, why yeah, it was it working before, but now it's not huh. working. Oh. And maybe it needs to be in synchronicity. See, if it's in synchronicity, somehow it works magically. But that's mm. not what should ha happen. But as soon as I say, okay, we're on 13, let's go to two. Over to two. And then if I tell it to be there, if I change it back to the right one, as soon as I get, as soon as I change to a, to a, uh, a certain thread and then tell this be on the same thread, then it suddenly follows along. It's like a lost puppy. It's the weirdest darn thing. Um, but anyway, uh, for this piece to work, all we would do is we would say, um, uh, there's a, a property called system prop active. Uh, so what you can do is uh, when you click on a different tab up here, we would capture the event for that particular tab. We would ch capture the new selection, new selected, uh, sorry. Yeah, new selection event. Um, and then we would say, oh, okay. Th we'll now look through the thread queue, find the corresponding tab field equate. And once we find the field equate, now we know which thread number corresponds with this particular tab. And then we can use system prop active to say, make that thread number active because we know that this particular thread was hit. So uh, it might take all of 10 minutes to code it, maybe a little less, but uh, I think given that it's 10-2, let's not waste our time racing to the finish line and leave it in a broken state. Let's do that for next time. Uh, and then what we'll be able to do next time is uh, we'll continue noticing other things that have to be fixed and we'll fix them along the way. But I think we're now at the point where uh, we could start creating uh, uh, a template uh, so that the, the, uh, the yeah. little, the tiny bit of code that we've had to, co that we've had to code uh, and write for this uh, so that it's automatically done by the templates. Um, and the template then we'll put it in every single window and we'll have some settings saying, do you want this particular window to... Uh, update the text on the tab or not, blah, 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 et cetera. So there you go. There you go. There you go. Well, I think that that deserves some applause right there. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad at least one person appreciates it. One person did appreciate it. Look in the chat. You have one, you have one person there who appreciated it. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> I mean, that's all you really want, right? You just, yeah. it's just only one person is, is you know uh, what? And ultimately, it's really too, John, because we're doing it for you. And it's and, true. Uh, it's true. And, and, and I know you appreciate it. And, uh, and, I, uh, and uh, one other person thought it was kind of neat. I do. And, yeah. and I have to admit, as far as coding as a spectator sport, most of the time, I think it's kind of amusing to watch me. And we did get to a point where when we were trying to figure out this whole concept of hiding and unhiding the tab and is it visible, we bought, got bogged down a bit there. Um, but as soon as I realized, hold on, wait, we're trying to put too much code in one great big block structure. Let's pull our individual functionality into separate routines simply, oh, clarity of mind, let's go. Uh, whenever I see anybody who codes stuff in great big block structures, I say, just if you want to let your brain explode and spend a lot of time scratching your head, code in great big block structures. If you want to keep your brain clear and know exactly what's happening, create nice, simple little stories so that little wee routines just do simple things. And you can look at any given chunk of code and go, I know exactly what's happening at this level. There's not a lot of noise and unrelated confusion. It's just clear and straightforward. So uh, right. that was a, a very good case in point right there today where I was trying to create a structure. The structure was becoming too big and we were getting bogged down. But as soon as I said, let's break it into little pieces. Oh, we were done in a couple of minutes. Yeah. No, that was, that was good, I believe. Lovely. And, uh, and as far as when we continue, um, so the 10th is probably fine. I think Andy said he couldn't be here in the 10th, although theoretically, if we he have did. nobody next week, I could probably do it next week as well. No, next week is the NGROC. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, NGROC is next week. And I was thinking next I, week. I made a whole big but, thing about yeah, it. <laughs> I know, I know, but like there were too many changes and twists and turns, and I, I just had to think oh, about yeah, it for a yeah. second. I realign with reality. So, so yes, NGROC ne next week. I do want to see what's going mm -hmm. on with that. Uh, the following week is the tenth, I believe, and uh, I will uh -huh. gladly, I will <laughs> gladly continue this then. And then, of course, the twenty fourth as well. 
needs to be dealt with. Uh, and, and of course, we, right now we're working on the whole concept of just the MDI tabs themselves and the template that does it. Uh, but we are also talking about going back and, and collaborating with Mark again uh, mm -hmm. and having his stuff automatically do, instead of having a template do all the magic, it ends up just kind of hooking in and registering events and stuff like that. Because this, this whole, you'll notice there's not a lot of event processing that's happening at this point. And if it's just a matter of capturing a couple of notifications and this and that, uh, we may be able to um, uh, just have it ha happen completely behind the scenes. I don't know if we necessarily need to have that, but that's something worth doing. So yeah. there you go. All right. Well, we will wrap up. Um, I don't know if I'm going to bring up the final slide. We know what it says, right? I think so. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, go see Top Gun this weekend, I guess. <clears throat> Except Mike, don't go see it because you're going to wait till it streams. I'll just, I'll just wait. It's, 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 okay. it's just another movie. There's so many good movies out there. Just another movie. Let me I'm, um, just to end here very quickly. Are you are you watching the new Star Trek? Are you uh, I, have not, the new I have Brave not new World? started yet. Um, so I desperately want to, but I don't watch a lot of TV. Uh, and I is one of the things that I like doing with my wife. So we're oftentimes trying to figure out what thing to watch together. And yeah. she was a big Trekkie back, a Trekker, whatever the heck you want. I don't care what you use um, way back when, but I think she kind of got tired of the whole thing uh, at some point. So she's not really super keen to jump on it and start watching much more, even though I think she would enjoy it. Uh, it for some reason, she's reticent. So I, I've not managed to start watching it myself yet. But if she doesn't cave soon, that is what we shall do. <laughs> I'll, I'll start watching uh, it myself. I, I think it's some of the best episodes that they've produced in years yeah, on any of the series. Or yeah. movies, for that matter. I, I'm looking That's forward to see. I was also opinion. watching, watching, rewatching Voyager, and I know you're not a big fan of. So oh, yeah, Vo was it Voyager? True. Yeah, Voyager. Uh, you're yeah. not a big fan of that. But I've not seen any of the newer stuff. I haven't even seen all of Enterprise. I've seen some of Enterprise. I've probably not seen all of DS9, likely. And I've also not seen all of Voyager, for that matter. I sort of stop watching all the time. So, <laughs> so, so much uh, out there. There's so much stuff in the Star so Trek much, world. So much. I, I, I literally am going to have to invest uh, a year of my life just getting caught up. So this is a big investment yeah. of time. It is. Well, but you're at the beginning, right? It's only been three episodes so far. So you, no, you've no, no, got no, time no. to just be there. And don't yes. worry about the rest of the stuff. Just don't worry. Yeah, and I guess that kind of <laughs> is, is sort of the beginning, isn't it? It is. This is the beginning. Is. Yeah. Yes. In the beginning. Although Enterprise technically came ahead of time. All right. Sorry, guys. I just wanted to drift off to a little Star Trek talk mm -hmm. there and see how Mike was on the on the whole thing. I'm quite keen. I just haven't pushed the start button. Quite. I watched it uh, yesterday and I was just so anxious like the whole time. I was just totally engaged. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Um, so again, next week is Engrok. And then the usual things happen, uh, Noantis on Monday and open webinar Wednesday and net talk, net talk on Thursday. Hmm. Yeah. Lovely. All right. Yeah. Everybody take care. Um, we're done. Thanks, Mike. I, I'm going to give you, I'm going to, let's see. There you go. Yay! <laughs> oh my gosh, you got them all. <laughs> a profundity of cacophony there you go <laughs> yeah well you deserve it well done all right everybody take care and we will see you um later bye everybody cool.